Uh, welcome everyone to our 2021-2022 Parent Athlete Coach Meeting. My name is Ryan Bohusky, Activity Director at Wilmer Seed High School. Uh, I'm excited for our seasons, fall season to be getting going. This will be my 10th season, or 10th year at the high school. And uh, we are excited to get back uh, much more to normal than we have in the past uh, 18 months or so and get our student athletes back out on the fields and on the courts and doing the things they love to do and giving them a great experience. Uh, some contact information is located on this slide, uh, email for myself and Brenda, uh, also our phone numbers for the office and a cell phone number for myself. Uh, if you need anything, please use those to contact us. If you have questions along the way regarding eligibility or just general questions for your child's participation. Uh, we'll move on uh, through the slides and uh, I'll talk with the, through them a little bit. We'll have some where you can just read some information. I won't need to read it all to you. Uh, and elaborate on a few things as we go. I do want to uh, just mention one thing. So I've got the Safe Learning Plan. That's available on Wilmer's uh, website if you want to go to that and check that out. There is one mandate that uh, uh, is in place at this point that will affect uh, fall sports and participation, and that is on public transportation, or excuse me, on district-provided transportation um, for coaches and student-athletes, masks will be mandated. Uh, that is not a uh, it's not a rule from Wilmer. It's a mandate that has um, come down from uh, either the federal government, the CDC, or from Minnesota Department of Health and Minnesota Department of Education. Uh, Wilmer Public Schools. Uh, there are many uh, recommendations out there, and um, some of them are very good ideas and uh, can help with uh, prevent the spread of COVID-19 and maybe the Delta variant things that are out there. Uh, but those our recommendations at this point, they are not mandates. So uh, the one mandate we do have is that we will have to have masks. At this point, we do not plan on going above and beyond uh, what the uh, recommendations are. You certainly are welcome to make that choice as a family, and we would support that and, and help with accommodations if needed uh, to, uh, to the certain level that we can. Um, but just know that we will s stick and, and be limited at this point with what is mandated that's what we will stay with. We uh, are not looking to go beyond that. So just a quick look at our agenda. Uh, I'll let you go through it. We've got uh, quite a few topics to go through. Some of them will be quick. Some of them play together. Um, Cardinal Pride will be our next uh, but here. Cardinal Pride is a, an overall booster club that is support of Wilmer activities. Uh, they're not necessarily tied to any specific sport uh, other than they are tied to Wilmer student athletes and they want to uh, do their part to help out and give give back money to programs uh, and to student athlete groups uh, so that they can uh, have some you know buy some of the things that there just isn't budget for uh, and as you can see since 2009 the creation of cardinal pride uh, they have given back over two, 159 thousand uh, dollars to cardinal high school middle school and to our groups and sport groups uh, and, and so just they're just an amazing group. They're very selfless. It's a small board. It's a small group. Um, their their main uh, fundraising is going to come. And then they do a large uh, book for the fall and winter sports uh, advertising book. They sell some ads on that. There's a golf outing as well that you can be a part of in the spring. And then they do have a foundation uh, that they accept donations or contributions to the golf outing profits uh, from that. Uh, We'll go to the foundation, and we'll talk a little bit about what what the ultimate goal of Cardinal Pride is. Uh, they do have a Cardinal Pride Hall of Fame. You can see those uh, members out at the high school. They are all um, uh, on the wall across from the gym, across from our trophies. And uh, each year they typically induct anywhere from three to four, maybe five people. This year there will be seven uh, because it will be a class of 2020 and 2021. Uh, due to COVID, we didn't have a class in a fall induction ceremony a, a year ago. Um, if you have somebody in mind that you think is worthy to be in the Cardinal Pride Hall of Fame, uh, check out their website and the nomination form is available there. And you can send that directly to that group. So a little bit about the endowment fund. So back this when this all started, the goal of Cardinal Pride ultimately uh, is to have their endowment fund large enough. And so the yearly uh, dividends from that 
would pay for the activity registration uh, costs for all high school students. Um, so when you register your child for their fall sport this year, uh, you may be paying $300 for them, maybe $200 for a winter sport and $100 for a spring sport. The, the big goal, the end, the end, end time goal for this is that Cardinal Pride would have the financial stability to cover all of those costs that uh, would, initially, would traditionally be covered by parents. Uh, so again, the endowment fund, if you, um, if you are looking for some uh, opportunities and, and have the ability to give some money away to donate, certainly contact Cardinal Pride. Uh, if you want to uh, actively participate, you can join their golf outing. Uh, and that um, helps as well, and every little bit helps and gets them closer to their goal. A couple things you can do, uh, become a Cardinal Pride member if you can. Uh, th their uh, membership form is online. You can find that on their website, and I'll show that to you in just a minute. Otherwise, there's a link to that on the Wilmer Activities page at the high school as well. You can give to the endowment fund. You can participate in the Cardinal Pride outing and at uh, some select football, basketball, um, games, they will do a 50-50 drawing, so you can participate in that as well. How do you become a member? Memberships are either $25 or $100 memberships. Uh, there's a website right there that you can go to and fill out the online form and send your check-in, uh, or you can go, like I said, go to, um, go to the high school site, high school webpage, go to our activities page, and that link is available there as well. Cardinal Pride is active on Twitter, and they do have uh, a, their own website where you can see the information that they provide and the board members and contact information. Moving forward, our athletic training services at the high school, they're provided through Caris Health. And uh, a couple of mainstays that we have. So every day from about 2.30 to uh, 3.30 or once practices get rolling, uh, Jessica is at the high school. She's at the training room and will be providing uh, therapy or rehab for student athletes that are injured um, and need to uh, work their way back to p full participation. One of the uh, largest things that they do is our impact testing, which is a requirement of the state of Minnesota. And each student athlete must have an impact testing uh, baseline done for their concussion management and for the concussion protocol should your student athlete have a, a head injury and, and have to go through that. Uh, just to know that that is standard practice. Uh, it is free for all of our student athletes. That's, that is paid for from a, a donation from a family in, in the area. It has been for many, many years. Um, each kid will go through a, uh, a, a baseline protocol and Jessica will take those groups through them. She will work with the coaches, get them set up and go through that. If your child does have a head injury, uh, the first, um, you know, obviously the first thing that would happen is Jessica is going to make a determination where they're at, and then we'll be in contact with the family in uh, trying to help out. If you decide if you need to get to the doctor right away, uh, have that test done, see where they're at. Uh, we also would then share that information with the uh, school nurse and the administration at the at the high school, and they would help and work with the teachers. Uh, and if you know possible classwork modif class modifications, things like that, due to some symptoms or some some uh, things that are going on due to the concussion, just know that it's about a seven to ten day uh, return to play protocol that we go through. If if your child is diagnosed with a concussion, um, you can you can pretty well guarantee it'll be at least a week, um, probably ten days, maybe sometimes two weeks, just depending how fast they recover from that. It is a uh, it is a uh, standard rehab coming back out of that and there's steps that they go through um, from passing their cognitive tests um, to starting some basic uh, light work, increasing that workload and making sure that they uh, can handle that, uh, don't lose their balance or get headaches, things like that, uh, and work back through and then get back onto their team and uh, into participation. So uh, Jessica works with all of our coaches. She will also work with uh, all of our parents, you know, if your child is injured uh, and needs some medical attention, uh, she will likely be contacting you and will uh, help you out in deciding, um, you know, what the next course of action should be. Uh, is it something we should be going to the doctor, going into a specialist, maybe, uh, or maybe just something that 
uh, it's a sprained ankle uh, or, or a lesser of a, an injury maybe, and we can just do some rehab here uh, in the school, uh, maybe hold the, uh, the student athlete out for a little bit, but then get them back uh, as soon as possible, but get them back when they're healthy and ready to be active and participate uh, fully. So our next slide here just shows our fall coaches, our, uh, our head coaches for our sports. Football is John Conald, boys soccer is Jeff Winter, girls soccer is Amanda Broman, girls swim and dive is Carl Schuldus, boys and girls cross country is Eric Jeldon, volleyball is Leah Ruder, and girls tennis is Amy Morrell. We want to welcome Coach Jeldon and Coach Ruder. Uh, the, this is their first year as head coaches here for Wilmer, um, and so wish them the best of luck, excited for them uh, and what they're going to bring to the table for our student athletes and uh, as extremely confident that uh, our kids are in good hands and, and we are going to have fantastic programs again for our student athletes. Our winter head coaches, uh, wrestling Ed Oler's boys basketball, Jeff Holtkamp. Uh, Coach Holtkamp moves, uh, moves up from uh, a lower level, of the B squad level, to take over the varsity reins, the head coaching position. Uh, we did have some uh, switching around in the coaches there as well. Um, but Jeff Holkamp will take over boys basketball, girls basketball, Coach Carlson. Boys swim and dive is Coach Shoulders again. Boys hockey is Jamie Hagen. Girls hockey, Eric Setrum. Cardex is, Cardex is Monica Maher. Gymnastics is Josie Kent. And Nordic Ski is Brad Haugen. And our spring head coaches, track and field is Mike Bobey. Boys tennis is Forrest Rice. Baseball, Tom DeVor. Softball, Shannon Taylor. Girls golf will be Marco Husky and Brian Mara, and boys golf will be Joe Keen. So transportation for our student athletes, uh, Wilmer Bus and Palmer Bus uh, will do um, the bulk of our transportation to two events. Wilmer Bus will run, uh, we will run a shuttle bus almost every night or most nights from uh, the middle school up to the high school and then possibly from the high school to uh, off-site practice locations. The students that are allowed on that bus to come to the high school must be on a high school roster uh, at that time or their middle school program needs to be practicing out here at the high school using, utilizing some facilities that we have out here. That busing service is not to uh, provide transportation for just a general student to get a ride out to the high school, let's say to uh, go home with their older sibling or something like that. It is strictly for activities. Uh, we do have a list of kids that need to be on there, um, and that's uh, monitored on who can ride, who cannot, uh, and when we run that. That bus will bring kids to the high school. It will bring kids from the high school to practices, uh, but then the kids need to be picked up from that practice site. An example would be uh, in the spring, we would bring kids out to the high school uh, for track practice, uh, maybe softball, whatever. Uh, the buses then would drive down to Kennedy or to Hodap Field and drop uh, kids off that, that didn't have a ride uh, for our track practice at HODAP, uh, but then those kids would need to be picked up from HODAP. They would not bring them back to the high school, or they do not uh, bring them home and, and drive them in, in a bus route, if you will, to drop kids off. Uh, another point, uh, just a note, when we return from our events um, on, a, on a nightly basis, let's say we had a, a team up in Brainerd, and they're driving home on a Tuesday night, uh, we will not be stopping the bus at uh, multiple locations along the way home uh, to meet parents, um, you know, at, at the Sunray gas station or to meet parents, um, you know, at County Road 9 and uh, 23, um, the bypass where you come off. Uh, we will bring kids directly back to the high school, and that is where they will be dropped off, and that's where they'll need to be picked up. So some eligibility basics. Um, just kind of going through Minnesota State High School League requirements and district requirements. Uh, our our eligibility is, or our, excuse me, our eligibility is based off of Minnesota State High School League and uh, what their requirements are. There's an eligibility statement that you must fill out when you register. Um, there's an uh, online, con or excuse me, er emergency contact information that's required that you provide. Um, your current sports physical must be on file, and we need the hard copy of that brought in when you have that physical. Uh, those physicals are good for three years, um, but it's uh, important that you take some time and really check that out. The Minnesota State High School League 
in the spring of 19, uh, excuse me, the spring of 20, uh, and then all of 20 into the spring of 21, waived the requirements for um, physicals that needed to be updated, um, but in an effort to try and limit the number of people going to hospitals and taking up appointments at hospitals where they may have been better served uh, for, for people that were sick. Otherwise, uh, the state has waived the, those uh, renewals, but that is no longer the case. So if your child's physical is expired, they're good for three years from the day that they had their physical. If that physical is expired, they will need a new one before their fall practice begins on uh, August 16th. Uh, student athletes will not be permitted to participate uh, in any way at practice until they have all of this information in and one of those is a physical. And you would turn that hard copy in at the high school office. There's a, a there's a box right on Brenda's desk, uh, but you would turn that into her and then she will get that into the system and that will also then be transferred over to the nurse at the high school so that that information is on file in the uh, student information system of campus as well. Uh, participation fee, you would pay that electronically on your parent portal. Um, there's a drop-down box there to choose. And just know we have gone back to our traditional fee structure for our, for our sports. And so your first sport is $300 at the high school, second sport is $200, and third sport is $100. And we'll talk a little bit more about uh, family caps and stuff later on here in another slide. Uh, transfer paperwork, if you are new to our district, uh, so you uh, attended a different school district last year and you are a sophomore, junior, or senior, you need to uh, set up a meeting and meet with myself uh, and or Brenda, but it, eventually you're going to meet with, with myself and we are going to go through and start your transfer portal and, and your transfer uh, possible appeal, things like that could get into but anybody who is new to Wilmer High School this year and you are a sophomore, junior, or senior, um, if you did not attend school here last year or if you were not on our roster and doing uh, distance learning through Wilmer Public Schools last year, you need to have that conversation so we can determine your eligibility. There are a lot of different ways kids were educated in the, in the last 18 months, especially last school year uh, with various online schools or homeschooling options or different things your family may have chose. If you did not attend Wilmer Public Schools last year, did not get your education from us, and you are a sophomore, junior, or senior, before you are eligible to play, you have to have a meeting with uh, myself, and we need to do a transfer, um, some transfer portal work with the Minnesota State High School League on your behalf. Academic eligibility, you must be on track with the appropriate credits to be eligible. Um, so for the State High School League says that you have to be on track for graduation. At Wilmer, that means uh, if you are in your third year of high school, uh, you must have junior credits to be eligible. If you are, uh, you know, a couple credits short and it's your third year, but you're not, uh, you don't have the proper credits to be considered a junior on your transcript, then you are deemed academically, academically ineligible and you cannot participate at any level until you have the proper credits. Online registration, so all of our registration for high school activities, high school sports is done online. Uh, it can be found on our webpage, uh, on the district site and on this uh, senior high site. You also do that uh, if you're listening and you have middle school kids, uh, you will register your kids for middle school activities uh, through this as well. Please know that the family account you create is the family account you will use throughout your child's um, duration at middle school and high school. Do not create new accounts, please. Uh, when you do that, that creates duplicates and uh, it is a long process uh, and a tedious process uh, to get people removed from lists, to get um, records transferred over or get them combined together. So if you are trying to log in and you've forgotten, maybe you forgot your password, something like that, click and get your password and use the same account. Please do not create a new account. Uh, it will cause a lot more work and a lot more hassle um, for you and for us. We are not able to add or, or delete kids. That has to be done by the, the host, which is our schools. 
So it's extremely important that we use the accounts we have. If you have a new child, a younger child that now is moving into, the, into the, maybe the middle school or hadn't done something in the past and now is going to try, you know, as a sophomore, they're going to try uh, football maybe for the first time or a different sport. Uh, use that same family account and just add a new student, uh, add the new student to that. Don't create a new account for them. Um, the physicals, do not submit them via registration. You need to turn them in in a hard copy. Many times your doctor will just email uh, the physical right over to the high school uh, and they may have forms there. Otherwise, those forms are available online to download. Uh, when you register your student, you'll use their activity ID uh, and that should be available on campus. You'll be able to see what their activity ID number is. Uh, be sure you use that uh, when you first register them and add them to your family. And again, uh, log into your family account. Do not, uh, do not create a new one. That information is updated weekly on our end so that we have all the latest information uh, should you say you move or you change doctors or something like that. And then our coaches do have that emergency contact information available to them if they needed to get a hold of you for some reason. So how to find a schedule, uh, sign up for notifications, etc. cetera. Um, this is extremely important uh, just for to keep you in the loop. Uh, you can get as elaborate with this as you want or very basic. Uh, you could do, you know, not do it at all if you choose, but this is a great opportunity to uh, kind of get reminders, if you will, and to get notifications for any changes that are coming up for the sports or activities your kids participate in. This would also uh, work for middle school activities as well. Um, so this is uh, actually the, the slide you see here is the site of uh, Wilmer Public Schools homepage, their main homepage, and this is on the very bottom on the left-hand corner that as the arrows clicking towards uh, view the WHS athletic calendar. Uh, so you would click on that and that would take you to the next. So this is a shot I, I did fast forward to August 16th to just look at the calendar, but this is what it would look like uh, on your end. And then you'd click on that notify me link underneath the calendar on the right-hand side. We'll take you onto your next screen. A, an account. Um, I don't have that shown here, but you would create an account, put in a username and a password, um, and create your account. And then once you have that, you would go into choosing your activities. And you can choose activities, um, you know, maybe speech or band, uh, band or choir. Maybe you want football. Maybe you have a, a senior boy who plays football and baseball and basketball. And so you would click all three of those. Uh, now you have a freshman daughter who's starting at the high school, and uh, she's in soccer and dance and uh, golf in the spring. You click all three of those. And then maybe you have a middle school, uh, maybe you have a niece or a nephew that's in middle school activities, and you want to know uh, what the middle school volleyball schedule is going to be like. And so you could click that as well, and, and then you can set up the notifications you want to get. Do you want to get them uh, by day, uh, daily? Do you want to get them a week before, do you want to get them, you know, an hour before, whatever you want for reminders, it will send via, either via text message to your phone or to email or to both. Um, and it will send reminders of upcoming contests. It also will show uh, any special information on that. And uh, maybe the most valuable to this is if there are any changes, which there will be um, every season, every year, there are changes uh, in games, in locations, in start times, uh, maybe, uh, you know, they get weathered out for some reason, get canceled and rescheduled. And so you, you would use that. It would get you, give you notifications. As soon as we make those changes online, those would come to you, uh, to your phone, to your email, whatever you choose. And in real time, you would see those changes and be able, be able to adjust your schedule accordingly. So some expectations that we have for our Cardinal coaches. There's some things that we talk about every year. Um, and, and are a little bit in order of, of what we talk about as priority. So uh, treat your athletes with, with respect. So um, firm belief that everything starts with respect. Um, and anything bad probably can be traced back to somehow some uh, lack of respect along the way. But treat athletes with respect. Be very organized. When you come to practice, be ready to go. Have your practice plan ready to go. Uh, be honest with kids. Um, let them know exactly where they are, what, you know, what was good, what was bad, what needs what needs some work. Um, but 
don't sugarcoat anything. Be honest with kids. Be straightforward. Uh, they are they are mature young adults growing, and they can handle it. Um, but be honest with them and upfront so that uh, there's no surprises down the road. Be positive, and encouraging. Um, no use of profanity. Hold our athletes accountable. We have there are you know, rules and expectations for participation, and everyone needs to be held accountable on those. Uh, hold yourself and your other coaches accountable. Be a great communicator. Work with parents and be a great listener. Uh, some things that we would ask of our parents, uh, we would ask that you guys hold your child accountable. If they committed to going out for something and they're not having, they're not enjoying it, there's value in sticking that out and understanding what it takes to work through some tough times and to work through something that maybe isn't your favorite. So uh, if they're going to try something and they're going to whatever, let, stick it out, um, learn from that experience and then move on. And if it's not for you the next time around, uh, so be it. Uh, be supportive of your child. Uh, it's their experience. It's their choice. Um, you're, you can help to guide them, but let them learn. Let them make some mistakes. Uh, let them fall down and pick themselves back up and, and support them and do what you can so that they can have the best experience positive or possible. Uh, be positive with them. Uh, understand that things are not always going to go great for them. Uh, and so there will be some tough times to go through. And, and, again, use those as learning experiences and, and try and make a positive experience out of it. Uh, be their parent, not their coach. Uh, as you move into high school sports, uh, typically we don't have uh, parents that are coaching kids at the high school. And, uh, you know, let let the coaches make their decisions and be their parent. Help them understand, what, you know, what's going on and, and make some decisions. But uh, just be a parent to them. Let them know you care. Let them talk first. Uh, and, you know, after a contest, whether it goes good, bad, or otherwise, uh, let them come to you. Let them talk. Don't don't just uh, bombard them as soon as the game is over and go, you know, what happened here, what happened there? Um, let that communication just kind of work itself through. Encourage them to do their best, and absolutely anytime you have concerns, communicate with your coach uh, and talk about them. And we'll talk about some, some different topics here in a little bit that uh, are appropriate or good things and, and needed things that you should be contacting your coach and some things that, uh, you, you know, you may want to ask, but you're probably not going to get an answer to. Um, and finally, just enjoy enjoy their experience. It's theirs. Uh, sit back and enjoy it. Support them. Uh, be a great great fan uh, to them and to their teammates. Be supportive of the team, and uh, just enjoy it because, boy, in a blink of an eye, it's going to be gone. So, expectations we have for our athletes: uh, first and foremost, is academic accountability. Uh, you cannot, uh, you do not get the privilege of participating in high school athletics if you do not have the grades and the credits and the work in the classroom to justify that. So first and foremost, you, you'll hear us, we will refer to the kids as student athletes all the time uh, because student comes first. You are a student first. Uh, and if you do a, a good job in the classroom and you take care of business there, uh, then you get the privilege of participating in, in uh, uh, high school sports and, um, and showcasing your talents in front of uh, you know our community and, and communities around the state, you know, actually. Uh, follow the Minnesota State High School League rules. Part of that online registration is, uh, is is your eligibility statement. Minnesota State High School League rules are in effect 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Uh, so they don't they don't stop in the summer. You don't you don't get a buy, you don't get a pass, um, and you don't that you don't have to follow them. Once you sign that uh, eligibility statement, that says you are going to uh, abide by the Minnesota State High School rules. That is in effect for you until you graduate and or, um, you know, don't participate in any activities anymore. Be a good, uh, have responsible citizenship, be a good school leader, uh, work hard all the time, know your role and execute it. Uh, your role will change throughout your career. Um, you know, you may, you, you may be playing at a certain level or a certain position one year, Depending on the makeup of the team, that may change next year. It may even change during the season. So uh, know what your role is, understand it, and execute it, uh, and and own that. You know, that's what your job is. That's what your role is on the team, and you do that to the best of your ability. Uh, communicate. Um, we we ask a lot of our kids, and if they have if they have an issue, we'll show, show in just a minute here. Um, we make sure we ask that they advocate for themselves. The first step in uh, solving anything is you talking to your coach. 
Uh, so advocate for yourself. Be a great teammate. Be somebody that people want to play with. Uh, be a leader. You know, make great memories with your kids, be, uh, with your friends. Um, because, again, it, before you know it, it will be over. So next, we uh, four questions we live by. So when we work with our coaches at the, at the high school level, um, we work with the education and, and the training that the Minnesota State High School provides. And there's four cornerstone questions that they ask and that we work with. And one of them is, why do I coach? Why do I coach the way I do? How do I define success as a coach? And what does it feel like to be coached by me? Uh, and so we work with these questions. We, we talk about them. Uh, I ask our, our coaches to, you, you don't necessarily have to do this on a daily basis, but certainly on a, uh, uh, every season you should be doing it. And I would you know say you know, probably if more often or maybe weekly, whatever, just go through these and probably um, just reflect on them and see where you're at, how things are going, uh, is, how's your season matching into uh, where you thought it was. But these are, are things that we continue to ask ourselves, we continue to work through. Um, and so we've taken these four questions for our for our coaches training, and now we've we've mel um, kind of changed them around a little bit to fit for a student athlete and also fit for a parent. Uh, and just questions that our coaches may ask our athletes, or we should ask our we we would have our athletes um, ask themselves. So our athletes, we would ask them, why do I play? Uh, what's the reason I show up every day? So why do I play? Why do I play the way I do? How do I define success as an athlete? And then what does it feel like to coach me? Uh, and again, this is maybe not a daily um, question or reflection for our student athletes, but certainly something that we would like them to, to uh, you know, just keep in the back of their mind. Um, you know, naturally, these things would typically come up during maybe a little bit of a tough spell, things aren't quite working out uh, or, or we're just not having a great uh, day or a great week and uh, use these things to reflect on and, and what am I doing as an athlete, as a student athlete, what am I doing to either make the situation better, worse or whatever and, and to use these to then try and make some improvements and make some adjustments moving forward. Then we would take these four questions and we just present these to our parents. Again, we don't we're not going to call you up and, and ask you these, but hopefully you would take them uh, and take this and, and use it as a self-reflection as well. So taking those four same four things is uh, why or how do I cheer and how do I support the team? Uh, why do I cheer or support them the way I do? How do I define success as a parent? And then finally, what does it feel like to be around me at an event? <coughs> so just kind of using those to see you know, where, what your role is there and, and how reflect back on what you're doing. Are, you know, uh, are you supporting the whole team? Are you uh, supportive of what, what's going on in, uh, in the team and whatnot? And, and is, is it a great atmosphere? Are you creating a great atmosphere, positive atmosphere for the student athletes and our teams to participate in? So channels of communication. So we know evident, it, it, at some point in your child's career, there's probably going to be some questions. Um, not everything is always going to go the way you want to. Um, and that's our, our coaches are hired to make decisions. And sometimes those decisions, um, you know, just aren't, the, aren't what you think or aren't what your student athlete, you know, thinks are right or maybe are, are the best decisions. But that's what our coaches are hired to do. But when that comes up, um, when there's an issue, when if something happens uh, and your, your child comes home, it's like, hey, I, you know, this happened. I don't like it. I, I, I don't know what's going on. The first step in anything to resolve that is is encourage your child to uh, talk with their coach, talk with their and the coach at their level. So if they're on the JV, they should talk to the JV coach. If they're on the varsity, talk to the varsity coach. If they're uh, in football and they're a, a, a D back, maybe they talk to their D backs coach first. Um, but the first and foremost is talk to the coach at their level. And the kid, uh, we ask you know ask the kid to advocate for themselves. Um, and I would, you know, I don't know the exact number, but probably 95 of all issues are going to be resolved at that point. Uh, it was a, a misunderstanding or a communication um, glitch from the coach to the kid or, you know, the, uh, 
what was said maybe isn't what was uh, the perception of what happened or came in isn't what, what was realized by the student athlete. Most things will be solved at that point. If they're not, uh, we then would have the, the athlete and the parent meet with the coach. And typically your head coach may also be involved then if it was at a lower level. Uh, but it is extremely important that the athlete and the parents are there. Uh, so everyone hears the same conversation, gets on the same page. Um, again, most of any issues that are left over are resolved at this point. Uh, and then finally, if they're, if that, if they aren't though, uh, the athlete, the parents, the coach would come in and we would sit down in my, in my office here or wherever and we would work through that and I'll mediate through that. Um, just know that there, there may be times where, uh, we may just agree to disagree at the end of the day. Um, and so not always are you going to hear the answer you want to hear or get the re resolution that you want uh, or that you think is correct. Um, but just know that we will do our due diligence. We'll listen. Um, we will hear your concerns and uh, work through them as best we can to try and give your child the best experience possible. So some of those questions that are going to come up, um, and this is just, this isn't a, obviously a, a all encompassing list, but just a quick list. Uh, of some things that usually uh, are more prevalent to come up. And on the left side, you've got appropriate things for, you know, a coach uh, or a parent to bring to a coach, uh, things that they would be concerned about, you know, just the welfare of their student athlete, uh, their academics, logistics for practice times, busing, etc. cetera. Uh, what or how questions. So an example is, you know, what can my child do to get better? What should my child be working on in the off season? Uh, how do I get... Uh, how do I get my child into this camp or this clinic? Things like that. There, those are great questions, and, and the coaches will all have. You know, typically most of our coaches have exit interviews with the kids uh, at the end of their seasons, and those are things that they would cover with them. You know, this is what you need to work on for next year. We need to, you know, improve this skill or improve these different skill sets uh, for the next level. Um, and then just be prepared for the, you know, those answers. They're going to our coaches are going to give you honest, uh, straight answers on what you need to do and what your child needs to do uh, to get to that next level, to get on the floor more, to get on the court more, get more playing time, whatever it is, if that's your concern. Um, they will tell you, you know, what needs to be done. And obviously it's up to the student athlete to put in that extra work. Um, the topics on the right side are, are things that you're, you're probably just not going to get an answer from our coaches. And, and uh, you know, the reason for that is they, they are hired to be the coach and to make these decisions. Um, they would, work with their coaching staff, um, maybe myself in a tough decision. Uh, but that's, you know, that's the bubble that they're going to work in uh, as far as making those tough decisions when it comes to your know, team selection, who's going to be placed on the varsity or the JV, uh, who's going to get more time on the court or more, you know, or, you know, they're going to have a few less minutes this week. Uh, some of that might be from game to game, situation to situation. Maybe the team you're playing uh, next plays a whole different style uh, of uh, I'll use basketball as an example. Maybe they're, uh, they've got a lot of height and they play a whole different style of, of defense against us. And the skill set that, uh, that your kid has just doesn't match up well against that. So there may not be much playing time for them that game. Um, likewise, two games later, we may play a small team that run and guns all the time. And that fits great into your kid's skill set. And they may get more minutes than they uh, you normally would in that way as well. So, uh, but our coaches make those decisions. They talk about that all the time. They look at injuries, health of kids, um, and, and who, who can they put out there uh, at the varsity level, the JV level. As you, as you progress through the levels, uh, there is going to be more and more importance put on uh, winning. And uh, that's not the end-all, be-all, but you, know, there's, you, you don't want to go out there just to lose every single time. So they're going to make some decisions, gives them the best chance to be successful and ultimately win or come out of that with a great experience. Uh, team strategy, coaching strategy, other athletes, um, our coaches will, will never talk to you about somebody else's kid. And likewise, you would, you know, you would never want them to talk to somebody else about your child. Uh, so, you know, that question is just a, a, a non-starter. And then the why questions. Um, why isn't my child starting? Well, that, there, that's a good question for your kid, uh, to bring up to the coach. Like, I, I, I think I need to get more playing time. And what can I do to get there? Uh, the why question is just not going to go anywhere because um, there's a lot of work that goes into it. There's a lot of different factors, and that's something for the student athlete and, and the coaches to work through. 
uh, and there's it's just a, a multi-headed uh, uh, thing that that it all plays together. So uh, the, the final thing for that is you know positive uh, for to have a positive conversation. Um, we I ask our coaches to have a 24-hour rule uh, with something that comes up, especially when it's a, a you know kind of a high intense or a big decision, and we would ask that of all our parents as well, or even our student athletes, um, unless it's an emergency and it's a, you know, it's a, a something that needs immediate attention. Uh, we just ask our coaches, you need to go home and sleep on it, get a clear head, get the emotion out of it, and then make a good decision and, and have a productive conversation. So we would ask the same from parents. Uh, and, and don't be surprised if you, uh, if you're, uh, have an issue that you want to bring up and you want to talk with a coach right after a game, uh, you know, minutes after a game just finished, uh, and they don't they don't honor your discussion, and they walk away or say, uh, just say, you know what, give me a call, send me an email, we'll set up a time. Uh, don't be, don't think that that's a personal thing. That's just that's what we ask them to do, and, and uh, we know that more times than not, uh, nothing nothing positive is going to come out of an immediate reaction conversation. Um, it, best for you to go home, clear your head, put your thoughts together. Uh, the coach can go home. They can uh, decompress from the from the game and whatnot as well, and then be able to think clearly and just have a good conversation the next day. So, so fees and uniforms. Uh, like I said earlier, we're back to our tra uh, our traditional fee structure for our sports at the high school. Your first sport is three hundred dollars. Your second sport is two hundred. Your third sport in a single year is one hundred. Uh, if you are on free or reduced lunch, if you qualify for free and reduced lunch, there's a little caveat to this because the state of Minnesota has said they're giving everybody free lunches this year. Uh, that doesn't mean that you qualified for free lunch. That just means that they're not, our district isn't going to charge anybody. Uh, you still would need to fill out the paperwork uh, from WEAC and um, to, to see if you qualify for free and reduced lunches, uh, which then allows you to pay the 80 or the $40 fee. Um, so if you have that and if you filled it out in the past, that is a yearly renewal. So you have to fill that paperwork out each year. If you've never done it in the past and maybe your financial situation has changed, um, I would you know encourage you to pick that up if you feel that that uh, is something that could help out and reduce those fees for you. Fill that out, turn that in. Just know that you know that's not going to be an immediate turnaround. That paperwork has to get processed uh, through. And so it could take uh, a week to 10 days, maybe two weeks, especially at the beginning of the school year. There's going to be a lot of forms coming in. Uh, if you think that you may qualify, you fill that that out and you're looking to make your payment, uh, but you don't want to pay the 300 and then worry about a, a refund later, uh, just make sure you contact us. We'll, we'll work out uh, an initial uh, s smaller payment to get your child registered so they can get their uniform and get going with the year. And then once we know the uh, results of, of the uh, form that you filled out, we'll adjust accordingly. So uh, the family cap for uh, a kid, you know, if you have kids at the middle school and the high school or just multiple kids at one of the locations, your family cap is $700. So uh, whenever you reach that, um, let's say if you've got a, you know, multiple kids in sports, uh, let's say you have two of them at the high school uh, or three of them at the high school and they're all playing a fall sport, uh, you would write it instead of writing a check for 900, you write a check for 700 uh, or make a payment of $700. And then you would be done for that year. That's all you would have, uh, be charged for the year for that. All middle school kids that get moved up to the high school and are, are then on the high school roster, uh, they would pay $200 per sport, just a flat, doesn't matter if it's their first, second or third, they're going to pay $200. At the middle school, it's if you stay at the middle school and that's where your participation level is, uh, their fees are $100 per sport. So uh, we will, uh, we do have some checks and balances in that to ensure that we get payment uh, and that we get all of the paperwork taken care of. And so typically we take our team pictures uh, sometime during the second week of practice. Sometimes in the fall, it may extend into the third week, but Typically during the second week of practice, we take our team pictures. Uh, to be in that team picture, you need to have a uniform. And in order to have your uniform, you have to have made your payment uh, for your sport. So um, that just helps us avoid the uh, problem of people, uh, you know, excuse, excuse, excuse. And then all of a sudden the season is done 
and they've never made their payment and their kid has played the entire season and didn't pay. And so before they will get their uniforms, they have to have their, their uh, all their paperwork in and their fee paid. Fundraisers. Uh, in the past, we did multiple fundraisers each season. Uh, your, if your kid was a three-sport athlete, you may have done uh, three or four or five a year, depending on if your booster clubs did something. Um, we change that and we do one major fundraiser a year. We do that in the fall. All fall, winter, and spring athletes do the fundraiser. And uh, all, the sport, all the sports and the coaches are involved in it. Um, we have a meeting with our coaches here next Wednesday to go over that. And then we'll have the kickoff shortly after that and get the kids selling uh, the fundraiser um, uh, for the fall. Just know that whatever your child sells, uh, whatever money they earn, it goes directly back to their sports. Uh, so let's say that uh, let's say they earn three hundred dollars, and they are a one sport athlete. They only play one fall sport. All three hundred dollars of that is going to go to their fall sport. Uh, if they are a two sport athlete, uh, let's say football and boys and basketball, then if they earn three hundred dollars, one hundred fifty one hundred fifty of that will go to football. 150 of that would go to basketball. And if they're a three-sport athlete, let's say they play football, basketball, baseball, then each sport would get $100. 100 to football, 100 to basketball, 100 to baseball. So the money directly follows the kid uh, and it goes to their sports uh, student activity accounts. The money that is raised in that can only be spent on the kids. Um, we use the term, you know, for the kids, excuse me, by the kids, for the kids. So if the money is raised by the kids, it has to be spent for the kids. And uh, I say that just so that you know that, um, you know, the kid, if they're going out fundraising, um, that money cannot be used for, uh, you know, coaches to buy uh, coaching gear. Or uh, if we go, let's say they go on an overnight trip somewhere uh, and, they, and they use that money to pay for hotel rooms and, and meals for that overnight trip, um, the money from their SAF account, from their fundraising, can only be used to pay for the kids' rooms and the kids' meals. Uh, so the coaches would have to find, uh, either use their own money, uh, use their school budget, uh, maybe the booster club would kick in to, to help cover that. Uh, but the fundraise dollars that the kids earn can only be used for the kids. Attendance and student handbook. So um, we're back to a little more, we're in school, so it's gonna be a little bit uh, cleaner this year. It was. It was quite uh, jumbled last year with kids that were on hybrid and then in school and then completely on distance, uh, distant learning and whatnot. Um, with everybody back in school, it'll be a little bit cleaner. Um, if you are in school, you need to be at practice. If you are in school and you decide, and you choose not to go to practice, that's gonna be an unexcused practice for you. Uh, if you miss during school uh, and you have practice that night, you need to get that you know, excuse. Your parents need to call in or you need to get bring back your doctor's um, uh, appointment uh, slip or whatever it might be uh, to clear yourself. Uh, if you have a competition on a day, let's say it's a Tuesday and you have a competition that night, uh, you must be in school the entire time or you must have excused absence for the time you were gone. Uh, and that has to be done beforehand. You can't, you can't uh, miss first and second block uh, and then think that you're going to play that night and, and bring in some information the next day to clear yourself. Uh, our coaches all have access to their rosters and to the, can see the attendance of their student athletes. And so we ask them to, to stay on top of that, to check that regularly, especially on game days, to make sure that we are playing or not playing ineligible students that shouldn't be out there. Um, so there's some examples there uh, of different excused absences. Uh, obviously, a parent makes a decision for their child uh, on whether they are going to excuse them from school or not, uh, and we honor that. Uh, you must be in good standing. So if you have uh, a lot of absences, if you have a lot of tardies, uh, and you're not staying up with your schoolwork, um, then we will, you know, we will uh, discuss that and we'll approach that and figure out if there's uh, a solution. Um, it could lead to some ineligibility, uh, but that'll be just on a case-by-case -case basis. So Minnesota State High School violations, I like to go through this um, so just people have a little bit of an understanding of what goes into a violation and then ultimately if there's consequences or not. Uh, I use bylaw 205. This is uh, typically what we use the most or what we see the most of. 
um, when, it, when we deal with chemical eligibility issues for our student athletes. And the, uh, the bylaw 205 says a student athlete shall not at any time, regardless of quantity, use or consume, have in possession of beverage containing alcohol, use or consume, have in possession tobacco, use or consume, have in possession, buy, sell, or give away any other controlled substance or drug paraphernalia. And that includes e-cigarettes or vape pens or vape delivery devices. Um, so any, you know, any of that that happens with that typically, um, the majority of the time if something happens and uh, a student gets caught by law enforcement, we get notification from law enforcement, you know, anywhere from a, uh, a day or two after, you know, maybe upwards of, of a week, depending on which uh, agency is sending that to us. Uh, it's important to know that uh, law enforcement agencies are required to submit that information to us. So uh, if you're in another county, in another city, uh, let's say you go up to Duluth for a family vacation or, or for an outing and um, something happens and you get a citation for uh, for possession, let's say uh, the Duluth Police Department or sheriffs or whoever uh, uh, gave that citation, they're required to send that to Wilmer High School. Um, that goes to the principals, um, assistant principals, and then ultimately to myself here. Uh, and then we would determine if there's Minnesota State High School violations. So uh, just understand that that's all encompassing in the state of Minnesota and uh, should carry over from community to community. Uh, so let's say that uh, you know, ch your child receives a, a citation for, um, in this case, we'll just say a possession, uh, chemical eligibility possession, uh, and notification comes to us. Now I will call the, the kid down. We'll have a conversation. We'll go through some paperwork that were required to by the state of Minnesota and by law. Uh, and if we determine at the end that there was a violation of, of the Minnesota State High School League bylaw 205, uh, and this was the first time this happened, it would be their first violation. And their consequence would be two weeks or two contests of ineligibility uh, or whichever is greater. And so to explain that out, um, typically, uh, you know, or not typically, but if you received a violation, uh, let's say during the summer between your junior and senior year, and you come back and you're a fall athlete, um, so you you have a consequence when you come back. We would meet, we would go through it, we would determine, yep, there is a violation. You have an ineligibility to serve. That ineligibility must be served in that season, in your next season of participation, and you must complete that season in good standing at the very end of the year or the end of that season in order for it to be fully. Um, uh, fully served. Uh, if you have to miss two weeks or two contests, so what does that mean? Well, if it's before the season starts, the violation, you're typically going to blow through the two weeks um, in the first two weeks of practice. You're not going to have any competitions, uh, and you'll go through those first two weeks uh, very easily. So in that case, then, the two contests would be the greater uh, of the consequences. So uh, again, just to use football, they have one game a week. It's easy to understand. You would have the first two weeks of practice, and then your first week, uh, your first game, you would be ineligible for, and your second game you'd be ineligible for. And it's the games that are at the level that you are, are playing. So you can't be a varsity player and say, oh, there was a freshman game and a JV game before ours. That's the two I sat out. So it doesn't work like that. It's uh, contests that are at the level that you are uh, you know, registered or you're deemed to be a, a part of that team. Um, a little, little more complicated if it happens in a season. And uh, I'll use basketball as an example because they can have multiple games in a week. Um, let's say over Christmas break something happens and you come back from Christmas break and uh, we, again, we go through the process and we determine that there is a violation and it's your first one. Uh, and so you have two weeks or two contests, whichever is greater. Uh, now we look at, uh, we have to really go through and figure out how many games you're having um, Again, let's take this, you know, so it's the second and third week of January that you came back. And in basketball, you might have a game on Tuesday and then a game Thursday, a game Saturday, uh, the following Tuesday and Friday. So in that two-week period of, you know, either two weeks or two contests, whichever is greater, uh, in that two-week period, you would have had five contests. But so the greater of the consequences would be the two weeks. Uh, so when it happens, typically when it happens in season, most of the time, it ends up being the two weeks, depending on sport, obviously. Uh, and then if it happens in the off season for you, uh, it, it, it typically is the two contests. 
Um, now that's not always the case, but that's most of the time how it works. Um, if you do have violations, just know that they do hold over or carry over and they stay with you. So if you had a violation your sophomore year and then you got another chemical violation your junior year, uh, that would be your second. And so you would have three weeks or three or six contests. And if you had another violation later on, then that would be your third. So it doesn't, it doesn't reset by year. Uh, it stays with you. And again, you have to serve that violation out through the end of the season in order for it to be completely satisfied. We do also have uh, some local consequences in our handbook uh, that would add on to it um, if a student athlete is found to have uh, been in violation of the Minnesota State High School League, one of their bylaws. Uh, the three things that would come up with that, you'll lose your captaincy privileges for one calendar year in all sports. So regardless of, of what sport you're in, uh, the date that that, uh, that violation is determined here at the school, then you would lose your captaincy eligibility for one year for all sports. You're not eligible for postseason awards at Wilmer. An example, of MVP of your team, lettering, maybe most improved, something like that. You would not be eligible for any of those awards. And the third one is uh, would be uh, would only be realized for kids that are after the end of their junior year or during their senior year. So that summer after your junior year, going into your senior year, and then all of your senior year, if you received a violation during that time, um, then you would not be eligible for, we call them the big five awards, would be our Lions Award, um, the, our Anderson, our Erickson Awards. We have five big awards that we give out at our senior awards night, uh, typically, and, and they carry scholarships with them and some uh, you know pretty high-level recognition. Uh, if you have a Minnesota State High School violation during your summer after your junior year or during your senior year, you would not be eligible for any of those awards. Um, a couple of years ago, our coaches, uh, actually probably about six years ago, the coaches uh, decided that they wanted to give the kids uh, a little bit of a incentive to report, to self-report. Um, they made a mistake. They got caught. We're, you know, they know we're going to get information from the, from the uh, whatever law enforcement agency or whatever, uh, wherever the violation was. Um, and so uh, in trying to help them own that uh, and to uh, to understand that, yep, they made a mistake and there's going to be consequences, but I want to uh, meet that head on. Uh, if they self-report, if they come in and let, let me know uh, before anybody else comes in and lets us know, um, we would waive the second one of those consequences. And that, uh, so then they would be eligible to be an MVP and to letter or to receive some other sort of uh, award from the from the individual team. So uh, just something to think of there. If you do uh, make a mistake and get, uh, you know, have an issue to, to resolve, uh, own it, take care of it, bring it in, and it will be uh, better for you in the long run. So social media, we talk about social media a little bit. Uh, I would say social media ebbs and flows in the number of issues we cover with it. Um, you know, typically most of our issues, I would say, are end up being, um, from a competition standpoint, uh, you know, our, somebody in our team uh, sharing things back and forth with uh, uh, another team uh, or another school or something like that and kind of uh, maybe call it trash talking back and forth. And, and when it crosses a line, we can have some, some issues there. But just some things to remember that once you post something, it's out there. It's not coming back. Someone can find it. Even though you might delete that post or take it down, uh, you can never really make sure it's gone. It's out there. Uh, and so you own it, and you own it until uh, you, well, you own it forever. So just understand that once it's once it's posted, it's out there. Some questions that uh, we think you should ask yourself before you make uh, maybe a controversial post, if you will. Uh, will anyone be offended by it? Uh, will they be embarrassed by it or hurt by it? Uh, are you proud of what you're posting? Um, and then, you know, how would you feel if someone posted that about you? And if any of those questions make you go, hmm, I don't know, then it's probably something you shouldn't post. Uh, we just ask, you know, use use common sense. Uh, stay away from the negative posts. Stay away from, from calling people out. You know, if, if this is something that happens and it affects the school day, affects the team chemistry, uh, these would fall under the Minnesota State High School Bylaw 206, uh, which is uh, the Student Code of Responsibilities. And you could lose your, el in, uh, lose your eligibility in your sports if, uh, if you uh, do some things that are inappropriate. 
Um, just to let you know that if you plan on being a college athlete and you want to get recruited, uh, they will research your, uh, your uh, social media accounts and, and what your online portfolio is, if you will. And then just be aware that as a parent of a student athlete, uh, you can, you can rest assured and you can be very confident that any college that recruits your son or daughter is also going to check out your social media. Um, they know that once they uh, recruit a kid and if they bring a kid into their college program, uh, they are bringing mom and dad with that, uh, with that child. And they have a certain standard of, of expectations and behavior that they want in their team and their families. And uh, so just know what, what you put on your social media as a parent uh, could have a uh, either positive or negative effect on your child athlete's ability to get a scholarship. So um, it, it's not just about the kids. It carries over to, uh, so, uh, you know, kind of extends out on the branches on that as well. Our Wilmer Activities Handbook uh, can be found at this website. It can be found. There's a link on our homepage uh, that should be updated uh, today. And have a new one on there. So if you uh, if you want to look at that, if you want to view our handbook, it's available to you at that website. Or go to this to, go to the high school page, click on activities, and you should be able to find our handbook there. And for those of you that are, would uh, would have been at the meeting, this would have been the uh, coach, the individual team meetings and their locations. Thank you for uh, listening and and going through this with us. If you have questions, uh, please. Feel free to call or email and uh, and ask those questions. Uh, it's much better to come in and have that discussion or to talk things through than to make an assumption or to say, well, I heard this or someone said this or someone said that. Um, just give a call and ask. Uh, we'll give you the right information. Then you won't have to wonder uh, if what you're hearing is right or not. So appreciate you taking the time to listen. We hope your student athletes have a fantastic year. We are excited. Uh, to get things back and rolling and uh, excited to move forward uh, as for the Wilmer Cardinals. We wish you all the best and uh, good luck.